Okay, that's a good answer for part A. Right. that to mega electron volts, that's right. Or maybe it would be better to convert this into electron volts. Okay. So then that would just be divided by 10 to the 6? Let's work that out on paper. Yeah, so in fact we have to multiply. There's a big difference between multiplying and dividing here. this might help to put in some commas. Um, this is 8,482,239 electron yeah. volts. Remember that mega just means million. Yeah. This really just means approximately 8 million electron volts. Well, now we can see we really have the 8 million electron volts. So then it's like you have it compared? Right. That's right. So to review that, does it take more or less energy to separate the nucleons? Uh, more. A lot more or a little more? A lot more. Ten a ten lot, ten. a lot more, or yeah, a, a heck of a lot more, yeah. basically. There's a huge difference between <coughs> 8 million and 13. Basically here we're comparing the numbers 8 million and 13. So there's a huge difference between these. Maybe to be really quantitative, we should find the ratio between them. So let's figure out the ratio to see exactly how much bigger that one of the energies is than the other. We could round that off to 600,000. That's good enough. The, uh, the binding energy for the nucleus is about 600,000 times bigger than the binding energy for the electron. So you might see these terms used. The binding energy for the nucleus is how much energy it would take to separate the components of the nucleus. The binding energy for an electron is how much energy it takes to remove an electron. And that's, much, that's going to be much smaller here. And they also say to explain, so you might want to say some of the, the significance of this. When we remove an electron, we're basically doing chemistry. Chemistry is about how the electrons and atoms re uh, interact with the electrons and other atoms. So when we add an electron or take out an electron, that's a chemical reaction. On the other hand, separating the parts of the nucleus is a nuclear reaction. Well, the big lesson here is that the energies involved in nuclear reactions are far greater than the, nuclears involved, the energies involved in chemical reactions. That's that same point we made earlier, that the energy you can get out of a nuclear power plant is far greater than the energy you can get out of a coal-fired power plant for the same amount of mass, because when you burn coal, that's a chemical reaction. That's the combustion reaction you learned about in chemistry whereas the nuclear plant is doing nuclear reactions. So the point that your instructor would want you to make here is that this is showing how the nuclear energies are far greater than the chemical energies. You can see that on this test on the front cover, he gave this information mm -hmm. here. Oh, 
he actually didn't quite put it the way I put it on the board, did he? Uh, well, so he, he would write it like this, c squared equals 931 mv over u. All he did is he interchanged the c squared and the u. So if you wanted to, you could still take that information he gave you and use it to figure out the u's, which I think is the most intuitive way to do this. Uh, so you'd have to process the information he gave you a little bit to do the problem using our technique. Any questions? Oh. Um, in my section, when we were discussing binding energy, um, they used a really large formula. Um, it's kind of sloppy, but it's like m minus c squared right. plus the u binding energy. Is that basically the same thing? Right. It's basically the same thing, but I think people get more intuition when they use this approach. Right. But we, we, we probably should see how they did that. So what we did is first we found the mass defect, and then we used that to find the binding energy. That equation is a way that you can find the binding energy in one step. Okay. But So we can see how they did that there. Basically, the way we approached this is we started by just focusing on the masses. And we found the mass defect, and then we turned the mass defect into an energy. But the way they're doing it is they're turning all the masses into energies from the start. So they take the mass of the nucleus, <coughs> and they turn that into its equivalent energy from the start. Well, what's its equivalent energy? That would be mc squared. And then they have the binding energy. And then they take the mass of the protons, and they turn that into an energy. And they take the mass of the neutrons, and they turn that into an energy. So the way we've been thinking about this is we've mainly been thinking about this in terms of conservation of mass. And we've been thinking that the missing mass is the binding energy, but they're preferring to think about it in terms of conservation of energy. So they start by turning all the masses into energies. And then they could say, well, the energy equivalent of the nucleus plus the binding energy should equal the energy equivalence of the two products that we get at the end. Because again, so we don't anymore, we no longer have conservation of mass or conservation of energy. We have conservation of mass energy. That is, you can either cash everything into mass and then everything should balance, or you can cash everything into energy. That's what they're doing here, and then everything should balance as well. Does that match what I have on the board? Does that match what you had? Um, they had. So this is Mn for the mass of the nucleus. Oh, well, I said what I meant by this was the mass of all the protons. If you just take the mass of one proton, then you'd have to multiply it by z to get the number of protons. And then if this is just the mass of one neutron, how do we find how many neutrons there are? Well, we talked about that last time. The mass number minus the atomic number tells you the number of neutrons. Do we match up now? OK. But, uh, I really think if you're just plugging into this equation, you're not really getting much, much intuition for what you're doing. I think if we get much more intuition for what we're doing, it'll be easier to explain the steps if we go through it the way we did here, first finding the mass defect and then changing that into energy. But these really are equivalent approaches. By the way, of course, I think we understand the basic ideas here, but you can see there's still technical issues that crop up with the unit. So you definitely want to try to find some more practice problems on yeah. finding energy to, to practice. Because even once you know the basic ideas, handling the units can be a little confusing. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm, or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.